Hello, hello, and welcome to this episode of the Worth Watching Podcast. Today, our guest is Paul. He's a friend of the show, and we're going to be talking about why the Phantom of the Opera is both the best musical of all time and the best romance of all time in any way, shape, or form in any medium. So, Paul, how are you doing today? Good, good. How about yourself? I am doing great. So, you like Phantom of the Opera, and I like Phantom of the Opera. Let's just talk about it. All right, fantastic. Well, I know uh, you've been a fan for quite some time. And, oh, good uh, gosh, It was yes. the first musical that I ever saw. Yep. Um, it wasn't the first musical I saw. Uh, the first musical I saw was a school play version of Crazy for You. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm. I actually like it. It's like a very, very Broadway show tunes uh, style musical, but yet it's still so much fun. But it's not as good as Phantom of the Opera. At least I will say that on an objective basis. But continue with what you were saying. Well, I mean, what I mean by my first musical is I should have said opera and I should have said professionally done. Okay, sure. Um, so I don't know if you're still on track with me there. But, uh, but yeah, and I think, you know, it's really intriguing, you know, yeah. from a young person's standpoint of view. It really captures kind of the audience even at a younger age. And I, I definitely agree with that because I think as early – I mean, I saw the movie when I was in middle school, mm. you know. Uh, I, again, I saw the movie first. I know a lot of purists out there are going to hate me for that, but I actually like the movie. Um, I like the movie and the play. I've seen yep. both and love I'm, both. I'm, I'm getting my pitchfork as we speak. <laughs> so you hate the movie? No, I, it's not that I hate the you movie. You just hate I just, Jared Butler. I just have a, a you know strong background in the arts, and I think yeah. that uh, you know it is what it is. And movies come in and they tend to over exaggerate things. Although the movie was really well done, I think, in yeah. my opinion. Um, what I was saying was that it's. Uh, I saw it in middle school, and. The, I usually hate when movies include a love triangle. I usually hate that because it's usually done so poorly. But this is done in such a relatable and epic way that it works so well. And it's something that anyone from the moment they turn 12 can relate to. Yeah. No, I, I, well, let me ask you a question on okay. that. Um, you know, kind of going off of that, do you see yourself as the Phantom or, or as Raul? Oh, I see myself as both depending on the day. Really? <laughs> yeah. If really? I'm having a bad day, I'm the Phantom. If I'm having a good day and feel like I'm on top of the world, I'm totally raw. Interesting. Interesting. Although, you know, preferably without the lady hair. I always Again, kind of the movie here. I always kind of pictured you as a Christine myself, but <laughs> I definitely, I definitely <laughs> would see myself as the Phantom. Very rarely yeah. ever Raul. Well, yeah, and and again, I, th I think if you think personality wise, I'm definitely I'm a more arts oriented person. I'm a little I'm a little bit of a darker person, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and I react to things in the way that the Phantom does. You know, I've hanged a guy a couple times uh, when I was angry <laughs> at a girl, so you know that just who hasn't right exactly. Who hasn't? So I think you know, but as far as which I personally relate to more, you know, it would depend on the situation. Because yeah. again, the story of the Phantom of the Opera is an incredibly tragic story, and the character of the Phantom is an incredibly tragic character. And so, you know, sometimes if you're having a day when you feel like you're on top of the world, you don't exactly feel like the Phantom, so to speak. You know what I mean? I, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I do. I understand what you mean. It's just, But as uh, a whole, I definitely relate more to the Phantom as a character. Yeah. I think the Phantom is just cooler. Oh. I mean, like, if we oh, pulled the definitely. audience, and we don't have an audience here to pull, but if we pulled the audience, did, yeah, everybody would, uh, would, would feel that they're kind of more Phantom-ish. Right. And I think, because, again, he's just... He has everything you want in like the here, here's what here's what I think everyone likes the Phantom is because he's not just a straight villain like you like you know he's not like a Joker who mm -hmm. is just evil. Um, he's sort of that tormented anti-hero, but was really ahead of us. Like the play came out in the eighties, um, and that was a time when usually you had the the uber good guy played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, or Sylvester Stallone, and everyone else were the bad villains. The Phantom is really like a tortured anti-hero kind of character who's trying to be a good person. He's trying to do what's right. He just has no idea what he's doing because he has such a dark, damaged background. And if you look at every movie and TV show that's been super popular recently, you have Mad Men, you have Breaking Bad. They all have these tortured, dark, anti-hero type main characters that everyone likes because they're such a broken, damaged person. And so I think that's something that the that the Phantom had way ahead of its time um, that still people really like today, and that's why they identify so well with him. Yeah, yeah, I do think it just begs the question, you know, is there anybody that's in the wrong there? Because it's just an unfortunate set of mm -hmm. circumstances, not necessarily that one person was correct or one person was incorrect. You well, can't help who you fall in love with. Well, that's 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 very true. Um, but, you know, I, I think, again, yeah, I, I think you, you beg a, a valid point um, that, you know, there's... The, the Phantom has, you know, been there with Christine forever, so he has an attachment with her. And then there's, you know, Raoul, who's been with her and the other side of her life since they were kids. So they have both equal attachments to her. Yeah, and in the end, you know, I, I don't want to analyze this like some kind of fanboy or something like that, but you can't really blame Christine for choosing. Well, 
if you haven't seen the movie or the play, just stop listening now because we're going to get really in-depth and give away huge amounts of spoilers throughout this thing. And the, So just stop listening now. But if you have already, then here we go. It's no surprise that she chooses Raoul at the end of the play because who would want to live in the sewers under an opera house with a disfigured person for the rest of their life, you know, other than the actual freedom of being with someone who they've known since they were a child. You know, it's but but again, yeah. I think people identify with the Phantom because he's not the goody goody two shoes choir boy that mm-hmm. Raoul is. Yeah. And and really who would choose to marry somebody that was old enough to watch over them when they were a child? Yeah, and pretend to be their father, actually, because yeah. that's a little bit creepy. A bit strange, know. don't you think? <laughs> no, did I say that I related as the Phantom? Oh, no, I, I changed my vote. I am now Raul. <laughs> you decided to go this slightly less creepy. Because I didn't really, I didn't, it's not that I haven't ever contemplated that before. It's just that, like, you get caught up in kind of the, 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 the right. whole relational aspect of, you know. I'll just let you off the hook here and assume that you're talking about personality-wise, not necessarily age relation to the person you're <laughs> yes. interested in. Wise. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> Clearly defining exactly yes, what I'm thinking. Exactly. Yes, exactly. All right, so I, I'm really curious now because we were just talking about this. So what problems do you have with the movie? What problems do I have with yeah. the movie? Um, you know, it. now, hold on. I'm not a negative person. I don't want to put the movie down. I think as far as movies go, you want to tear into job. it. You hate it. Maybe I will tear into it later. Um, but, you know, it's not so much the problems that I that I have with the movie. It's, it's, it's the problem that I have with the people that are being deprived of the experience of the theater as a whole, which is significantly different than going to see a movie, you know? Now, I a little bit of background. I used to sneak into my uh, my dad's car and steal the CDs. And, of course, oh, it would always yeah. be very difficult. Like, he, would, he would be angry that I did this, yeah. you know? Um, and, and I would take the CDs for weeks on end, and I would listen to them, like, when I got my first, uh, that, you know, Walkman CD player. So oh, it was good. fantastic. So I knew the entire, before I ever saw the movie or the musical, mm-hmm. I knew the entire soundtrack by heart. At, at points, I had no idea what was going on. Right, um, yeah. Just, yeah. You know, because the, the, the soundtrack doesn't make everything 100% clear. Right. Um, and I was, like, five years old, so there was a great deal of the material that I just wasn't ready to understand yeah. yet. Um, but I remember having the entire soundtrack memorized uh you know really still to this day uh and and when i went to go see it for the first time i went to the stranahan here in, in toledo oh, Ohio, sure, yeah. and uh and it, it came around the first time when i was about eight years old okay and my parents took me and it was just fantastic i yeah. mean it was breathtaking i mean yeah. what, I was, because i was I'm, I'm not a very tall guy right but i was an even smaller child <laughs> and the and that was like the biggest building i had ever been into yeah. at the time and the whole night was just so majestic i would not deprive anyone of the trip to the theater to go see the movie most i mean th- there's a reason that it's the longest running currently running show on broadway right oh, now yeah. it's because it's the best and it's the grandest and it's got such that classic old theater feel oh absolutely to it. yeah um but in just the best way possible it's mm-hmm. absolutely majestic i saw it um i saw it back in minnesota at the uh, the orpheum it was the you know the, the touring version of it um and it was i was blown right out of the water it was just such a, an experience to actually be there um because again i saw the movie first um uh-huh. which is again i love the movie and I, I will get into why i love it so much um and the areas that i think it does do things better than the musical and the areas i think it does things worse um but particularly just the experience of being there and seeing the live people performing these things and hearing them singing it live and seeing the amount of because the play is very special effects heavy too in what they throw in there on this uh, you know and what they do and it's just absolutely an experience. Yeah, no, it's 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 not that at all. It's just that uh, you know I'm not putting the movie down. I think they did a fantastic job. I just. Uh, I don't. I think that you should try the theater at least once. You know, and oh, it's original sure. setting. You know, yeah. it's like it's like depriving people of having homemade bread as opposed to the manufactured version. The manufactured bread is not bad for you. It's it's fantastic. But homemade bread has just got like when you were there and you lived it. Yeah, it's a different. Uh, you know, it's well, just I a mean, it's, it's like it listening together. to a CD of a band versus seeing them in concert. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. You know, if if a band only released music videos and someone's like, oh, I've totally seen the band. You know, you're like, no, you haven't. <laughs> You know, you've never been to a show. You don't even yeah. know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, it's a completely different experience. So, okay, again, I'm going to ask the question because I want you to tear into this because that's fun. What don't you like about the movie? What I do not like about the movie? Um, well, I'll, I'll start with, and it's it's a personal thing, and I'm sure this is not really what you what what you want to go in. But <laughs> go this ahead. is not the direction you want to go in. But, but uh, you know, my biggest gripe about the movie is that is that the voices of the actors and actresses, although they did a fantastic job, 
um, really just didn't meet my expectation for what a you know a professional opera singer could have done with those pieces. And and these were even remastered right um, yes. versions, which this I think everything's always better this live. This was the Tom Hooper version where they do everything live. Sort exactly, of thing. exactly. So uh, not not that I'm just saying. But I told you I had this soundtrack memorized when I was yeah. like five years old. Uh, so when I saw the movie, and everybody else saw the movie. Um, which, you know, I'm getting there, and everybody else caught on that it was popular right. and decided that they liked it. They were all rolling around with, like, the the, the movie soundtrack uh-huh. CD, and I was I just wanted to punch them in the throat. Yeah, I, I'm sadly one of those people. I heard the movie soundtrack <laughs> first. I heard it before I even saw the movie. So that one's probably better to you. But exactly, I think that's a legitimate yeah, like, like, gripe like, on know, my music side. Music of the Night, they changed the lyrics for the movie. I know. Those are my set of lyrics that I know. I could not give you the, the, the Broadway set off the top of my head. Yeah. I could sing the entire Music of the Night from the movie, though. Well, it's, n- it's not my fault that you're ignorant. Um, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, though, because here's something I liked about the movie rather than the play. Because, again, I'm very much a movie person. Um, I'm also very much a realist as far as I love. Like, that's why I like a lot of modern movies over a lot of older movies that, you know, the style of acting is a very realist style of acting these days versus more of a stage style of acting, mm-hmm. um, you know, in movies made like the 1940s and 50s. Um, which is not to say that I don't like classic movies before you start flaming me in the comments. I love classic movies, so you can stop. Um, but I thought what I liked about the movie is that if you're going to make a musical into a movie, I think it's important that you populate the movie with actors who are singers rather than singers who are actors. And I feel like if you listen to the soundtrack of the film versus the soundtrack of the play, in the soundtrack of the play it is being sung, mm-hmm. whereas in the soundtrack of the movie it's being acted. I feel like there's more genuine raw emotion being put into the soundtrack of the film um, i would disagree is, significantly really? yeah um now i know that you don't necessarily have as much background in theater as that i is do true. but cameras pick up probably 10 times what uh, what you would see you know on a stage from the back row mm-hmm. of an opera house and i think that you have to act i mean you have to exaggerate so well, much right. I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're not acting uh, the, the people on the stage aren't acting. I'm saying that as far as a realist style of acting, seeing the little subtleties in the face, seeing you know, and, and in, the, in the actual, I'm talking about the again. You were saying it's a remastered, separately recorded mm-hmm. soundtrack. I'm talking so in the music itself, the actual vocal emotion put in, rather than focusing on perfect form, mm-hmm. focusing on a putting as much emotion can possibly be crammed into those notes as possible, and making it sound like you're right there with them in that moment. I suppose. I'd have to think about that. You know, I'd, Let I'd me really, put it this way. I am partial realist to versus, the theater. Of course, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, from my personal opinion, realist versus stylized. Yeah, well, that's one of the, that's one of the you know, that's, there's some movie magic for you right there. Is right, that they can it, They can do so much more with a movie of to, uh, to make the storyline. Yeah. I mean, you're confined to a stage in theater. Oh, yeah. Which is, I think it's in its original setting. I think you should try it there first. Mm-hmm. Um, but movies, you know, they can take you all over the place. Like in the, in the scene when they exit the theater, yeah. she's in the graveyard. Yeah. On a stage, you're still inside a theater, even right. though they've typically, you know, or technically exited the uh, sure the, in the, the play. theater. Yeah, in the play. In the movie, they have this whole scene. It's outside and it's got a setting and they've got yeah. you know fog and they've controlled the whole thing. And you're right, you're right. The camera does zoom in and you can see their face mm-hmm. a lot better than you ever ever could from the right. stage. And again, and again, I think you may have missed what I was saying, which was I'm not even talking. If you if you're, I'm just comparing CDs here of the soundtrack side by side. Oh, exactly. I'm talking. If you listen to Down Once More from the theater version and Down Once More from the uh, movie version, I'm saying in the actual the, vo- the voice that you were saying you didn't you weren't the singers weren't up to what you were hoping for. No, they're not. And I'm, no. I'm saying that in the movie they were exactly what I was hoping for because I loved the human emotion that you could hear in the music mm-hmm. because they were actors who learned to sing rather than singers who learned to act. You know, rather than having this perfect angelic form of a voice that you would have on a Broadway stage. Mm-hmm. Um, it was much more raw, which is something I know a lot of people hated about the movie, but I really liked it. It was more raw. It was more, like I said, felt more realist, more human, as though this was a person expressing themselves. Well, let me uh, <clears throat> let me pose a question. Because sure. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a stickler. Okay. For, I mean, I had 12 years private les- lessons in, okay. in vocal, okay. so it's like I'm a stickler for form. Sure. And I'm a, and I'm a fan of the arts. Yep. Um, but so here's the thing. If you're gonna do something, uh-huh. you better do it right. Yep. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Yes. So, like for me, if you're gonna sing, you better sing to the best of your abilities. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I know those actors tried. It's just not their career path, and I don't blame them. Well, for that. I know, but, but Patrick Wilson started out on Broadway. He plays Raoul. Um, you know, he's he was he's been doing the Full Monty for a long time and things like that. Like he he is a Broadway trained actor. That's what that's what that's that's why they picked him for the role. Really, I was yeah. unfamiliar with the casting. Of okay, that. I just sure. saw the movie because I was such a fan. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. 
I think if you're gonna sing, you should you should put your you should put your heart and soul into it, and you should sure. do. And not saying that they didn't do their best. I'm just saying it's worthwhile learning how to sing correctly. Yeah. And it's not that they didn't sing correctly. It's just that they've not been doing it for very long. Right. If you want, I know that you spoke of you want a real a realist version of someone expressing themselves and all that raw emotion. And, but the truth is, is that when I wake up in the morning, I don't sing to express myself. If you want a realist terms, like in terms well, of expressing yourself, you know, every time I get a bad grade on a test, I don't run out into the well, hallway and. <laughs> start a musical <laughs> well and that's and that's something that i think again from someone that, like myself who is a fan of realist stuff i think that's one of the inherent problems with the musical is that that's not the way people express themselves but that's why i love phantom of the opera so much is because it takes place in an opera house yeah you almost suspend your disbelief on that part and the here, here's here's another thing i'm gonna i'm gonna go into another reason why i love just both the play and the movie okay is that as opposed to like comedy musicals or lighter drama musicals or a lot of just musicals in general where it seems like you're like you know here I am standing here, but the piano's coming, and so there's a song coming up. It feels like there are, there's music when the 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 emotions of a scene are heightened to a point where they shouldn't just be talking anymore. Yeah, you know, it's like because you know, you know, you, when when you're running, you know, you put the epic music on your you know playlist to try to get yourself. It's that sweeping music, but they're part of it as well. That's how dramatic the scenes are, and that's why I think it works so well in Family of the Opera is because it shuts off that part of your brain that goes, "They oh, shouldn't be singing," because you're so caught up in that drama of the scene and your brain, you know, has a musical segment in it that, you know, you associate sad music with sad scenes and happy music with happy scenes that you go, okay, this is here for a reason. And so it doesn't feel as contrived as a lot of musicals in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I, I see where you're coming from. I uh-huh. still disagree thoroughly okay. with your point. It's well, not. It's, you, it's going to take a lot. To, <laughs> I'm not going to convince you. you I'm just going to express my not. opinion. I just. I'm already too. It's. <laughs> I'm too stickler for this. I'm too old school. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, no. I mean, I'm not saying that I didn't like the movie. The movie is fantastic, actually, and and really cheaper to go see the movie that's, than it was to go true. see the real thing. So you get, guess um, how much? Guess how much I paid to go see the play? To go see the the yep. actual music. I got a group discount and stuff like that. Guess how much I go play, paid I to go know, see forty bucks maybe. I think it was, it was, it was, I believe it was either 18 or 12. Wow. That's because I got a crazy good discount. That's really also. fantastic. I know, it was amazing. I think both times I went, um, it was upwards of 60. Yeah. And it's, you know, depending on seating, we were 60 or $80. And the second time I went, I took a date. So it was really like 120. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say something here. And that's that, again, everyone can ready your spears, and you can especially ready your spear here. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sharpening it as we speak. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm not even sure I can safely say this. I really like Gerard Butler as the Phantom for what he brings to the role. I do not think he's a great singer. Um, I do not think he does not have the voice of someone like uh, John Owen Jones or Cole Milkinson. Who's your favorite stage Phantom, by the way, out of curiosity? You know, I've I've not had time to research it. I, I, the, the CD that I have, if you'd like to look it up, was the original recording so that's, done. That's, that's Michael Crawford. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so then I'm think, a Michael think, Crawford fan. Simply, I think, I think Michael Crawford sounds like a six year old. Yeah. Well, by virtue of the fact that it's the it's the CD sure. that I listened to when I was five, it's yep. still the one I have in my car. Yeah. It's the one you it's the one you're used to and the one you like. Yeah. I But anyways, I like I like Jared Butler as the Phantom because his voice is such a contrast to the other voices in the movie. It's so much darker, it's so much deeper, it's so much raspier, it's so much more sounds like someone who's been hiding in a dank tunnel for their life and hates themselves and hates everyone around them. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. That's, He's that's also I, a chain smoker for 30 years. Well, you know, so that's... <laughs> but again, I felt Gerard Butler acted every song that he did. You know, he was rather... like Okay, again, purists will hate me for saying this, but again, a movie fan first and then a musical fan after that. You know, he would just scream things when he needed to rather than perfectly sing them, things like that. He would break from the melody and things like that when doing that, which, again, is, I know, it's an unforgivable liberty taken and things like that. But I thought it worked so well for his character and brought such a level of understanding that the audience could instantly connect with his character rather than him seeming sort of like this distant, magical figure. Um, he seemed like, he, you know, it, as the movie drew on and things got worse and worse and crazier and crazier he he broke through this facade that he'd put on more and more until at the end he's just a person sitting there yeah i, I you know and the, the interesting thing about that is i'm not ready to to uh to ready my spear at all you know i really thought he did a good job oh as well. awesome and see, the, the, but the difference here is that me merely critiquing his voice isn't enough because you're right this is a movie and they have to act and the thing about acting um, in the movies versus on stage is that you don't really get to know the characters as well in a stage play i would argue 
Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they just well, they can't know, even yeah. get their personality out to you well enough. Right. Um, on a stage, they can't do it as efficiently as they can exactly. in a movie because in a movie you can you can zoom up in their face and you can you know you can and pan you can throw out in a and convenient see different flashbacks things. for thirty seconds exactly, when you need to exactly exactly which actually for the record they sort of do do in the play in the play too yeah, yeah I know I know um, so you know I'm not I'm not saying that I'm that I'm upset with the movie uh-huh. I think I've stated this like sixteen times <laughs> I'm just saying that I feel like I'm trying to make you be upset with the movie just so we can argue or I, something I'm really not I'm not though I mean I, I think the movie was really well done yeah. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm not a movie critique as in, like, I don't go around and, and do a lot of movies and I really don't know names either because right. my problem with, uh, with starting to know the names of like all the actors out there, I mean, I know like the, you know, the, the highlighted ones, the ones that right. are in all the main movies, but if you start to know their names, you start to focus more on the actor than on the part that they're played. And then you start to all of them. Well, exactly. But you know, it's <laughs> like you idolize them. And so for me, it's like, I never learned the names of. Even my favorite, I, I know like Mel Gibson, and that's old school because yeah. Mel Gibson is, you know, a little gone off the bandwagon. Oh uh, yeah, I mean there was a lot of news and press about him. That was, <laughs> it was unfortunate. Yeah, but you know, like I, I just, you know, Lindsay Lohan, yeah. my favorite actress of all time. <laughs> you know, Gary well, Busey is yeah, pretty cool. You know what they say: Disney characters never grow up, like that's, Mickey Mouse ooh, and Lindsay yeah, Lohan. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I think, you know. I, w- I would be more suited to dis- dispute the movie with you if I if I knew a little bit more on the background of the of the actors and actresses that were there. Sure, but I yeah. don't because – and I don't simply for the reason of, you know, when I look at, you know, when I look at a movie, I want to know – I don't want to know about Arnold Schwarzenegger. I want right. to know about The Terminator. And yeah. I can take information from that character. Mm-hmm. And that way when I see Arnold in another movie, yeah. um, you know, which by the way, an actor that's already ruined his reputation with me. He's too old. He should quit making movies. Yes. Oh, so you're not looking forward to The Expendables 3. Completely off topic, but I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, you know, but I, I think I might see it just for everybody else that's in it. You <laughs> okay, know? So you just, because you just it's don't like, like the world's best awesome, you know, guys. Yeah. I, I, think it, I think it looks promising. I'm, hope, I'm hopeful. For really? It, so, I, was, yeah. I was not a fan I of Last Stand. I love the Stand. second one. I like, love the second Expendable. I never saw Last Stand. Last Stand is like one of the one of the last movies that Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. did by himself. And it basically like the, uh, you know, the entire, the entire plot of the movie is that even though he's so old he's still winning <laughs> he's still and which that's is funny like because like charlie sheen would say yeah. <laughs> i may be old but i'm still winning <laughs> well that, no, that's like that's what i didn't like about it <laughs> no but simply you know i think we're, we're drifting here and the topic or the point sorry rather that i was point trying to make is that i like to associate with the characters and sure. not the uh, and not and not the actors because well, and, actors and, are human and then, I'll you, and then i'll ask you a question that i'm honestly curious about and that's how do you think uh, the representation of the characters, which do you like better, the representation of the characters in the movie or in the play? Because they did some different things with some of the characters from their backgrounds, things like that. And just how do you like how they're presented in the movie versus the play? Well, you know, we, we have kind of a, a threefold thing going on here. I read the book. Oh, gosh. Before I, I, I saw the, the musical, before I saw the movie. I read the Classics Illustrated version of the book. Yeah, Pitchforks. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I read it when I was like 10. Give me a break. Uh-huh. I, read, I read the book... Well, I, I read – well, not until a little bit later. I first read the book when I was a small child, and then okay. I, I heard the music and saw the musical, and then I saw the movie. Um, but in between the musical and the movie, I read the book in its mm-hmm. – um, in a French translation oh, uh, in high school, which was kind of fun. I also read Count of Monte Cristo, which is yeah. – they changed a lot of things in that in that one too. And the um, book is very different from the Andrew Lloyd Webber version, that's for sure. Oh yes. Yeah, well, this is this story is actually much older than Andrew Lloyd oh, Webber. This yeah. has gone back. Uh, well, and, and for that's quite what I'm saying. Is, is the, the book by Gaston Leroux is very, very different than oh, the yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber version of the book. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, saying. yeah. No, it is. It's very different, and really, um, it's like uh, the book was a little bit of a letdown to me too, because I'm so caught up in the theatrics of right. it that the book is actually like a story, and that no one just pops out of the book and starts singing. So I was a little <laughs> upset. But so what do I, you know, how do I feel about the representation of the characters? The book was the best. The book gave you the best insight into what they were thinking because the book could legitimately put lines on the pages that told you what they were thinking. Very true. Next was the movie because mm-hmm. the movie, like I said, just has a more efficient means of capturing exactly how they feel. Sure. Third is the opera, but that's just part of opera is right, that you exactly. have to get used to the idea that they're on stage and they just can't as effectively communicate exactly what's going on. I, I will say, have you seen the 25th anniversary? It's a DVD of the of the play. Um, no. This is very, I think it came out, whatever it was, probably 2012, 13, whenever. No, you know, you know what? I did watch years. this. This is on Netflix, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. At the, at the, <laughs> uh, whatever it's called, Royal Albert Hall yeah. uh, version of it. I thought that was very well done because they got, because they knew that they were being filmed. You know, so they were able to 
throw a little more subtlety in there, yeah. and you're really able to get but some see, of that. But see, even then, let's be careful here, because that is a movie of a musical. That's they true. can do multiple screenshots for That's multiple different angles, and they can change true. it whenever they want to. But and I was is, curious what your thoughts on that were, because I knew it was, it's, you kind of have the middle middle of the ground that is That's a good point. It is the middle ground. Um, But I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. You didn't like it? Because really? it's okay. not the movie, and it doesn't have the clarity of the movie, uh-huh. but it's not the opera, so you don't have the so uh, feeling of being so, in a so tux felt, in an opera house. Right. I felt robbed both ways. So, I felt okay, like I got you had the worst the of both worlds. I did. I did. Ouch. Um, so I don't, I don't want to, you know, I hate to let you down, but like, but well, the reason, that's the really reason like I brought it up me. is because that one is starring my favorite stage phantom, uh, Raman Karma. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I think he, cause he is the one that I've heard so far the most that throws the most emotion into the performance. That sounds the most humanistic throughout it all. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he's still also a phenomenally talented singer. Um, and so that's why I was bringing it up because I wanted to see your opinion on him as well. Well, I don't know what. Uh, maybe I should watch it in a large gym with all the lights off and dress up in a huge, suit. I, on a huge screen. <laughs> yeah, eat and popcorn and bring ceiling. a date and like <laughs> buy people to come in and sit next to me. So it seems normal. Yeah. yeah I'd go watch it for free. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we could set something like that up. But yeah, for, in the meantime, um, no, I, I was not a fan of okay. the movie of the play. Right. I, that's just too busy. Too much stuff going yeah. on there. So what would your opinion be then? Um, just, I mean, what would you, I, I, I'm going to ask you a pretty simple question. That's, you know, what would you, on a scale of, you know, one through ten, what would you rate the play and then what would you rate the movie? I know it's apples and oranges, so you're not comparing them, but what would you individually rate them? Individually rate them based on what I would have rated other movies and plays? Yeah, whatever. Just, just are you, you, after you walk out, do you go, that's a ten? Or do yeah, you go, you know? well, you know. It's it's the plays are difficult because I've seen a lot of plays, but they're yeah. also acted by different crews. Um, so, uh, you know, actually, different casts. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna actually jump in here. Sorry to interrupt again, but we told people we were gonna talk about why it's the best <laughs> romance and the best musical. We should probably talk about you know why it is the best romance. Probably best probably a good idea. Um, so really quick here before we wrap up. Now we've got no strong people along for this long. We should probably actually tell them. <laughs> uh, why do you think it's the best musical? I already said why it was, and that's because, in a, you know, as opposed to other musicals, I felt like the music fits exactly where it's supposed to go, and you can suspend your disbelief based on the setting. Interesting. Um, I think that there's a lot of aspects present there, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, that really make it the best for me. And it's, it's not – and guess what? I'm not the only one that thinks it's the best, okay? Right, yeah. You know what? You're already we, defending we, your we, statement before we anyone. don't even. have an audience to pull. No, because you know what? I have a background in, in, sure, in yeah. music, and everybody in music hates Phantom of the Opera. Oh, of course. All the people that are in opera are like, oh, well, that's the worst, you know, that's the worst musical that ever. It's so, it's so, um, what, what did someone tell me one time? I thought I got such a kick out of it. it it's just a crowd pleaser. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's the whole point of a <laughs> But I don't think it's just a crowd, crowd pleaser. pleaser. I think it's a really well put together crowd pleaser. It's something that everybody can relate to, though. Exactly. It's very universal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got a lot of key aspects here. But, you know, for me, as like as a younger kid, this was like fantasy land on steroids. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had you had the Phantom that was running wild, and you didn't know if he was like a man or a mystery. He yeah. seemed to be part genius. He could compose music. And you have the beautiful lady that was to be won over. Right. Um, you also have her prince yeah. uh, that she obviously clearly desired to be with at the end of the, of, right. of the musical. And you have the, you know, kind of like essentially what in my book turns out to be um, you know, what's the terminology I'm looking here or looking for here? The uh, you know, in in British literature, you always have a tragic hero. Oh yeah, really yeah. the Phantom of the Opera ended up kind of sacking himself or sacrificing himself <laughs> as a <laughs> sorry as a scapegoat. Yeah. Towards the end of the movie, he lets her go. Mm-hmm. They come in, and it's 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 really unknown actually whether or not they find him or they kill him. They just right. find the mask. Well, but, unless you're talking about the movie, in which case they do clear that up. But oh yeah, well that's that's once again. Well, that's why I like the musical. I actually like the ending of the movie for what it's worth. But continue. So yeah, really? yeah. So I, uh, you know, so really, I think there's a lot of aspects here. I think it relates to a large, you know, population of people. Yeah. Um, you know, but who hasn't been there in a love triangle? Oh, of course. And, yeah. Uh, Literally everybody on one side or another. You know, and so that's what I'm saying. If 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 those, you know, the the people who have been on the winning side. Of, of, of it, you know, and, and feel can, can feel the guilt and things like that. They, they can relate really well with someone like Raul or Christine. Yeah. Um, particularly Christine because she's torn up at the end of that. Oh, I know. Uh, and it's just what I say. I, I, I would venture to say that uh, that it's not really anybody's fault. It's right, just exactly, an un, yeah. un, unhappy circumstance yeah, that they all got very, put into. Yeah, very, very yeah. much so. Yeah, and if you look at 
Oh gosh, I got I got a rave about the last five minutes of the play in the movie. The 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 scene after Raoul and Christine leave, and Christine comes back to give the Phantom his ring back, mm-hmm. is one of the best examples of like five seconds that will make a grown man cry <laughs> ever. Like it yeah, is just that was, it that is was the tough. most heartbreaking moment of anything it, I've oh ever seen. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, that's. Uh... Because you can see in his again, I'm talking the movie here. You can see I, in his eyes. He thinks he's come back for her for a second, then he realizes that he's that she's just come back to give him the ring back, you know. And she's crying because she's broke. It's just so. Ooh. Ugh. Oh, that's yeah. That's uh. That's it's more so than good. I really even handle. <laughs> talking about making a grown man cry here. Yeah. All right. Um. No, that's uh. That's. That's really fantastic yeah. what they did there. I forget yeah. what we're talking about. It's so fantastic, actually. <laughs> oh, this what you wanted to rave about it. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. one of the reasons I think it's the best romance in the world is because you can relate to every single character in the love triangle. You don't have the like the jock bad guy like you have in like a romantic comedy. I know. You know? I know. You have you have three very relatable characters. Yeah. Who you can all relate to, and you know, and the best thing is, you will have guys who relate to Christine. You will have girls who relate to Phantom or Raoul. You know, you will. Everyone can yeah. relate to everyone, no matter who you are. You'll find someone to relate to. Yeah, that's. Uh, no, I don't know, but really seriously, probably one of one of the best musicals out there Definitely, um, yeah. and, and pulled by the audience they they you know i'm not alone in my decision in saying that that's just fantastic absolutely know? yeah i mean definitely if you guys haven't checked it out watch it if you can't get out to see the play watch the movie it's still a good option if you can see the play go see that and then watch the movie as well get the soundtrack on cd itunes whatever you want to do with it have fun with that thank you paul for coming on this episode of the worth watching podcast remember people to like if you liked it comment down below what you think of phantom